Hello, hello. It is Sarah Divinely You. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And I am here to talk about the full moon in Libra, as well as the third quarter square moon in Capricorn that we will be experiencing in the last bit, half of this lunation cycle that will actually end with a solar eclipse on the 19th, which will be in Aries. So we do not get a Taurus new moon this year. Um, and so, but before we get to that eclipse, which I will do a video about later, but let's talk about this full moon because I have been feeling this moon. I'm noticing this moon, uh, already. And the moon just made it into Virgo, maybe like an hour ago. Um, but I'm noticing, cause this is on the, I am and relationships axis because Aries is the, I am. In Libra is the in relationships. It's the seventh house. It's the seventh sign. It's the first sign that includes something besides ourselves. Um, and so let's get into this a little bit deeper. All right. All right. So this full moon is on April 5th. So tomorrow evening, um, I think it's like 1130 at night. I didn't mark the time on this, but I did in my weekly um, moon is at 16 Libra and the sun is at 16 Aries. Um, this is actually happening right after the sun conjuncts um no is the sun conjuncting chiron yeah that's what it is okay sorry <laughs> i had the little space cadetti today um so we've had a lot of energy conjunct chiron right we had venus we had jupiter uh we had mercury uh and now we're gonna have the sun conjunct chiron so i feel like with this full moon is coming a lot of illumination around, of course, relationships, but also our participation in relationships and how we are in relationships, right? Because relationships are always at least a two-way street. There's always you as a participant and the other person or the other entity um, or whatever we're in a relationship in, right? This isn't just about romantic relationships. This is how you are as a friend, as relationship to your family, as relationship to your job. Um, and all of the things like re like this is all about all kinds of relationships. You are in relationship with the book you borrow from the library. You're in relationship with your possessions, your computer, your phone, all of those things, um, which is why I am so um, I'm such a fan of being kind and generous to our devices um, and speaking to them and about them with kindness because it's energy and it's a relationship that I'm in um, with those devices. Um, so, and then, like I said, it's on the, I am and other people are in relationships axis. Um, and so you can see the chart here, um, that I have for you, for those of you who can see it. Um, and so we always have the full moon oppose the sun. Uh, so it's always in the opposing sign from the sun. Um, and so Aries being a fire sign, Libra is an air sign. Um, and concurrently, we have this building um, minor grand trine, which is ha which um, earlier in the week included Mars and Cancer, but now it is building with Saturn trining the south node in Scorpio. And then Saturn is minor, making a minor aspect to the north node in Taurus. Um, and so there's going to be a lot of that energy going on too. So there's a lot of like emotional cleansing going on with regards to how we are in relationships and all of the relationships. 2023 happens to hold a lot of relationship type energy. It's all about looking at how our relationships are going, what needs to change, um, what parts of yourself needs to change in relationships. Are you playing the victim and just expecting everyone to validate your victimhood? Um, are you being the, the sort of bossy leader or are you being the compassionate leader? Um, are you being a follower and making everybody else do all of the leading, but yet you can't, you're not making choices. Um, so there's always our role in 
our relationships. And so it's a good time, good opportunity to be attentive to how you are in relationships. Um, and so, and of course, this being the full moon, we are halfway through the lunation cycle that we started with the Aries new moon, the first quarter square moon in cancer. Here we are at the full moon. And then um, we'll talk about the third quarter square here in a second. So I did create some journal prompts for you of course focusing on your intentions that you set from march 21st when we had that new moon um and so what has come up for you that you feel like you need to release in order to move forward with your intentions and so this is could be relationships so maybe you've got a relationship to um a, a, a um escapism like gaming maybe you watch too much tv maybe you're binge watching too many movies maybe you're binge eating, maybe you're drinking, maybe you're doing something that is distracting you, or you're in a relationship with something that is distracting you from moving forward with your intentions. And it's become very clear that you're spending too much time with the thing or the person. And um, so this is an opportunity to really like gauge and take a look at what, uh, what is keeping you from getting after your intentions, getting after what you really want to pursue. Um, you know, we've got now, of course, Pluto and Aquarius. And so it's all about really digging in and um, seeing like what's holding us back from doing the things we say we want to do. Um, really, we're in that space. This is this is an intense time. This, um, you know, the Pluto and Aquarius we will have until June, I think it's the 11th. Um, so we've got a couple of months of it, but um, take advantage of it big time um, before everything starts to go retrograde. Very shortly, we will have things go retrograde. Um, and then are you willing to release that those limitations? So are you willing to let it go? Are you willing to be done with the thing that, or at least like tell the universe, like obviously when we release something, this goes for anything from doing a release practice to doing an, uh, um destroying a karmic contract when we do those sorts of releases there's always a time um for like it, you can do the thing energetically and then it takes time for the physical world to catch up the time is getting smaller and smaller as the fail has been thinner and thinner but and as the timelines are merging however there is still a process right um of you know saying i'm done with it i'm releasing it and then you've already told the universe that now you've got to have a routine and put in, put in place some practices that continue to let the universe know, okay, I'm really doing that thing. So if it's gaming or whatever it is, and you're like, okay, I'm going to game less so that I can focus more on my goals, my intentions. Um, and then it's a matter of being conscious of your time spent gaming. Um, maybe it's watching movies and you just sit and binge watch movies all day. And you're like, I got to stop doing that. So maybe limit yourself to one movie a day or one movie every other day so that you actually tell the universe, not only by this release practice, but you show the universe that you're willing to shift your routine in order to make that happen. Okay, so that's the full moon. It's a release. It's a big one. Um, and then we will have the third quarter square moon. Um, this is going to be in Capricorn. The moon is at detriment in Capricorn. This is at 23 degrees Capricorn. Sun will be at 23 degrees Aries. Um, this happens on April 11th. Uh, so there's that. Um Moon detriment, meaning it's so the moon is at home in Cancer where it is dignified, and then it's in detriment. In other words, it really like think about it Capricorn is all about work, 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 goals, achievements, accomplishments, all of the things. The moon is in flow, it's nurture. They don't, those two energies don't mesh well together. Um, and so you, you got the moon at detriment, however, it is still earthy. Um, can still be grounding um, to an extent. And um, we will also be in the middle of the uh, trine with Saturn in the South Node and the minor aspect of Saturn in the North Node. Um, so this could be very emotional um, along with the moon not being a happy person in Capricorn. 
So that's the third quarter square. Could be a tough one. Um, however, the sun will have just conjunct Jupiter right here in Aries. The sun will have just conjunct Jupiter. Um, and that's very good, positive energy, expanding energy. Um, so the thing is, is as we continue to release and let go and show the universe, we're willing to change our routine and change our behaviors and keep working and doing all of the things. Then we're going to have this sun conjunct Jupiter here in Aries, along with this third quarter square. And so you will continue to show the universe and then you will be rewarded and, you know, you'll get some expansion, get some abundance from that sun Jupiter conjunction in Aries. Um, so here are some journal prompts for the third quarter square. Uh, what progress have you made towards your intentions that you set for March 2020, uh, March 21st of 2023? What progress have you made? Uh, what can you celebrate about yourself? What can you, um, you know, give yourself a shout out for? Like, what, what have you done? What have you shown up for? Um, and then what would you like to be acknowledged for? And you can feel free to leave a comment on my YouTube if you want to be acknowledged for something. And I will happily shoot you a response with an acknowledgement. I'd love to acknowledge you for getting after your goals, getting after your intentions and continue, continuing to set the stage for what you really want to get out of um, not only this lunation cycle, but like this year um, and all of the things. So let me. All right. Okay. So that's the two next moon cycles. We will have a Scorpio moon on April 7th through probably around the 9th before it moves into Sagittarius. So if you are somebody who's sensitive to water moons, um, pay attention to that Scorpio energy on uh, the 7th through the 9th of um, April. And um, yeah, that it's going to be an interesting ride because again, this lunation cycle does not conclude with a um, new moon in Taurus. It concludes with a solar eclipse at 29 degrees Aries. Um, and so that's going to be a doozy of a moment, 29 degrees Aries, 29 degrees of any sign is, is like the most difficult, most intense, um, degree of that sign, because that that's like the most intense, like, did you learn everything you needed to learn for this Aries season kind of moments. Um, and so hopefully you've made a lot of progress forward, uh, that, um, solar eclipse occurs on the 19th of April, and then we will have our first retrograde of Mercury on the 21st of April. So you're, you got a little bit of time left. If you're making some progress, continue to make progress towards those goals, really show the universe. I am ready. I'm kicking it into gear. Get the discipline down, go listen to some Jocko Willink. <laughs> if that helps you to kind of kick your ass into gear. Um, I am definitely right there with you. I am trying to amp things up and move things up a notch. And uh, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I feel like I'm completely screwing it up. So I'm, I'm human too. <laughs> um, but I'm right there with you feeling this energy. So I hope you found this to be helpful. Um, thank you for subscribing on here. Thank you for the likes, the comments. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm Sarah Divinely You. I am live there every day. Um, so you can check me out there as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.